All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the League Express podcast. My name's Jake Keenan, and joining me as always is the editor of League Express, Martin Sadler. And Martin, uh, back by popular demand, we've got Gary Schofield uh, joining us in uh, the studio, you might say. Today we had a few comments on our video last week about, you know, going into a studio, but... um. Obviously, great to have Gary with us again. It certainly is. And welcome, Gary. Great to have you back again. And uh, tell us why you're wearing that Leeds shirt. I know you're an ex-Leeds player, but there's a special reason for that. There is indeed, Martin. Yeah, and also to you, uh, thanks again, Jake and Martin, yes. for the invite back. And looking forward to the show. But yes, uh, the great man himself, Louis Jones, as we all know, passed away a couple of weeks ago. And uh, it was Louis's funeral yesterday. And uh, so uh, the, the, the reason why I'm wearing this shirt, and also to you, it is a special shirt because it was a shirt we had designed. And as you were the major sponsor as well, Martin, as people will see, that uh, when Paul Gill got died, knows with MD, but also to uh, with Lewis Jones uh, yesterday uh, f- uh, from the funeral. I just felt as so though out of respect. It's the same sort of design, the colours, what the great Lewis Jones, the golden boy of the Rugby League War. The golden boy, indeed. The yeah. golden boy, absolutely. So I just felt out of respect and the privilege that uh, I wear the shirt today out of the great man himself in Lewis Jones. Tell us a bit about the funeral. Was it a, was it a, a, a good funeral in the sense that a lot of people there? And it was a great funeral. People yeah. who, who treated him with respect. Absolutely, absolutely. And I said, Big Jim were there, Mike Nicholas and Gary Evanson did a great. A, a great urology, you know, on behalf of uh, on Lewis and, and the family, just talking about uh, his great career and what he achieved, not just in in rugby league, but also to in rugby union. But uh, but the great uh, the great thing about it as well, and even even my father as well, because he saw uh, the great Lewis Jones play. But everybody says who saw Lewis Jones play is the greatest rugby league player, mm-hmm. not only for Leeds but one of the greatest I've ever seen. And I yeah. don't think I don't think you can have a better accolade by people giving you that uh, sort Absolutely. of uh, sort of accolade. Well, mm. I think didn't he play for the British Lions at rugby? Union when he was 19. 18 or something, 18 yeah, and yeah. 19, and, yes. You know, yeah, went yeah, on tour yeah. with them and, yeah. and then went on tour with Great Britain in 1954. But I'll tell you what as well, uh, Martin, and uh, I, say I, didn't, I wasn't lucky enough to, to see him play, but I've seen the clips, but all, mm. everybody, every, all everybody talks about is his speed, his sidestep, that bicycle kick what he had, yeah, yeah. and also too, he had this sort of looping pass where he just caught everybody out, you know, like back in the days when we first started seeing Lord Lewis, you know, singing, slinging yeah, yeah. the 20, 25 yarders nobody had ever seen before. That, yeah. And also, and also to his goal kicking, you know, his goal kicking, he could kick goals from anywhere, the, the toe poker, three or four steps behind from there. Yeah. The man was just simply an absolute magician, a maverick on the rugby league field. And you know, and, and we say it about, not just in rugby league, but also in sport nowadays. Lewis Jones, and there ain't too many players who we would say in rugby league, or maybe in sport nowadays, is that people would pay good money to Absolutely. see. It. And everybody, everybody said, and some people who were there yesterday, they, the fathers and the grandfathers, they used to take their young son to say, listen, I'm taking you to watch rugby league today. You may not be interested, but you will be once you see Lewis Jones play. And yeah. that is the, uh, that is a reputation and also to the uh, the stature of the great man in Lewis Jones. Uh, absolutely. You, you, you never tried to emulate his bicycle kick then, Gary? Uh, <laughs> no, I, I wasn't very good at riding a bike anyway, Martin, to be honest with you. So, so, so not at all, but uh, no. what an absolute superstar rugby yeah, league. And uh, he was. all I'll say is Lewis Jones, a golden boy, rest in peace. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And we all say that, don't we, Jake? And, mm. uh, yeah, absolutely. It's very sad when great players finally depart from us. And But, he, you know, I think he was 93, was Lewis, so... You know, always sad to see somebody go, but he lived to a great age. Mm. Yeah, he's absolutely right. And you never want to, you know, catch up with old friends and meet under those circumstances. Mm. But was it good to, you know, catch up with some people you might not have seen in a few years? Yeah, ago? yeah, 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 absolutely. You know, we we talk about the uh, obviously we, we we did again. We always say we didn't see the clips of Lewis, but what we have seen, you know, just about what the what the great man and how good the great man wore. And uh, mm. as we say, it's like in sport and, and it comes around in circles. But uh, one thing for sure, I don't think we'll ever see another Lewis, uh, another Lewis Jones. That's for sure. No, yeah, probably okay. not. Yeah, yeah well, fellas, we had um, some Challenge Cup games happened over the weekend we might run through some of those results obviously there weren't uh, many games televised well there weren't any televised on tv only online which is a bit of a shame yes. um but i've sort of done my best to go through and watch all the highlights that i could watch um you know in the first match there we had hulk ar 40 defeated Salford nil uh what was your reaction to this game martin i was absolutely amazed at that scoreline mm. um i don't know what could have gone wrong for Salford, but obviously hulk ar absolutely panned him and uh Whatever their game plan was, it worked, didn't it? Mm. And um, to see Salford so comprehensively beaten, I wonder whether they were placing much store by the Challenge Cup this year. You know, you, you, you sort of think maybe they weren't. And, uh, uh, and But as you say, it's frustrating because we've not been able to see the. It, mm. I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? All these Super League games are on TV, Gary, and we, we're able to see them, you know, one by one if we've got enough time to sit through them all. 
Um, and it seemed a bit weird this weekend to have the Challenge Cup. And the only games you could watch were Leeds and St. Helens online on the BBC website, and then the game between Lee and Featherstone on the Sportsman website. Mm. Um, apart from that, you couldn't, you, you know, you couldn't see any games full uh, in, in full. So, but shock at that at that game. What did you think, Gary? Without a doubt, because uh, and as I said, we were looking at the way the Salford have started the Super League season. Yeah, you know, I think they've been uh, one of the best teams, haven't they? And, 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 they have. And the performances when you look at the last two, certainly uh, beating St. Helens at St. Helens, a great yeah. recovery. The last twenty minutes and literally. You know, with that, uh, with all that short, short, uh, you know, drop out by Mark Seeder would have beaten Wigan, wouldn't they? You know, they so, would, yes. so they went, they went there in plenty of form, and I would imagine uh, plenty of people were saying, "Yeah, Salford could do all kids of Rovers." But, but again, but, but my uh, question is quite simple. When you when you look at it, it's all about consistency, and I just wondering maybe because you know they've had two great performances, Salford could they have maintained? Yeah. you know, that sort of consistency from there. And bearing in mind, Hulky, I went to Salford about. Three or four weeks ago, they didn't play that well, Okie Sarova. So I was just thinking maybe, yeah, it's a challenge cup. We didn't play that well. We want yeah. a bit of revenge because Okie are at home. They will be quite formidable because the, yes. the atmosphere uh, was created certainly by the crowd. You know, it's, 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 uh, it's a great place to go. And by the way, I can't wait to go to the Derby on the, on Friday and get the atmosphere. But yeah, Okie are, they were ready for revenge after the performance against Salford early in the season. But yeah, the scoreline was very, very surprising 40 0. Mm, very definitely. Um, now, it looks like Okie are back on track to uh, some of the form we saw last year so good oh, signs yes. for them going forward Yeah. Mm. Uh, moving on to the next game we had Wigan 44 defeated uh, Sheffield 18 it was quite a tight match up up until half time 12 all at half time wasn't mm. it I mean uh, you know when I saw that I mean I was at Headingley on Friday night watching Leeds and St Helens but you know, at half time at Headingley, I, I came in and, and saw that half time score at Wigan. You wasn't thinking it's going to be another 1998 you know, Martin, was you? I, I, I mean, you know, you, you, know it, you knew it wasn't going to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Wigan, you know, ran away with it a bit in the second half. Did they have half. a strong side, Wigan? Did they play a strong oh, yeah, side? Yeah, they played a strong, strongest strong side. They just oh, didn't yeah. have. Um, Absolutely. Jay Field wasn't playing, but they had Ryan Hampshire. For yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so he was a very good side. player. Well, that's fair credit to Sheffield then, isn't it? Well, you know, Mark Aston, yeah. uh, you, you see, I think Mark Aston is a really fine coach and. The Sheffield club seems to be a really well-organised club to me. And, you know, there's all this stuff at the moment about them having a planning application for a new stadium. And good luck to them with that. I hope that comes off. And I, 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 I spent 20 years working in Sheffield as a university lecturer. And so I've got a bit of a soft spot for Sheffield, Sheffield Eagles. Mm. I was there right at the start in back in about 1983 when Gary Hetherington was setting that club up. So I always like to see them do well. Um, but even I couldn't, you know, when it was 12 all at half time, I was sort of saying, well, that's great. But then, you know, Wigan will win it in the second half. And they, they did, obviously. But, uh, but congratulations to Sheffield. I'd love to see them do, do well in the championship this year. No, definitely. And, uh, yeah, just those great sides, they find a way to just wear you down, wear you down, wear you oh, down. Yeah. And yeah. that showed late in the second half, didn't it? Absolutely. Uh, in the next matchup, uh, the one you were at, Martin, Saints 20 defeated Leeds 6. Uh, one week after they went up to Headingley and, and defeated them, um, you know, seven days prior. Yeah. Uh, and were you there on Friday night, Gary? No, no, no I mean, it was, it was a disappointing performance by Leeds played in for the most part very heavy rain but um the only bright spot for Leeds was a an interception try you know by Harry Newman which was straight out of the Gary Schofield playbook yep. I must say um and you know uh, Harry Newman is 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 a really fine player I I I think but but potentially needs to be learned to be a bit less selfish, perhaps. I, I was talking to one or two people at the club afterwards, and uh, you know he's he's got such a an abundance of talent. But um, you know, I, I really hope after all the injury trouble he's had that he makes the grade ultimately, and you know be, becomes a long term international player. But 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 Leeds had very little attacking idea. Um, Matt Frawley, the the halfback who they've they've recruited for this year doesn't look to be doing it to me um gave a lot of passes out that went to ground just didn't just didn't generally stamp his stamp any authority on the game and it was a bit too easy for St. Helens, if we're really honest about it mm. Gary what have you made of the lead so far <laughs> well this I, think, year? I think lead so far this season I, I'd say it's the huffing and puffing 
you know. Mm. Uh, They've had some good results, actually. Uh, you well, know. yeah, well, the reason why I say the Hufford and Puffin mine is if you look at the uh, the two first staff, certainly uh, against Lee and then the, and the game before, there was, you know, there was, there was pretty ordinary, and then they came back in the second half. Again there. Yeah. But then when they played Saints last week, before the, the week before the Challenge Cup, uh, again, in the first half, they were, the, uh, you know, they were pretty ordinary, but they managed to, to come back a little bit. But then, uh, and then the week before, the first half was excellent. They didn't take mm-hmm. the opportunities, and then the second half was, was no good. So mm-hmm. Leeds are just suffering and puffing. And, and, and to uh, play half a game. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, and that, that's simply not good enough, you mm-hmm. know. And, 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 as, yeah. and, and as you mentioned there, and, uh, you know, Frawley, at this moment in time, uh, you know, he's, he's, not, he's not doing it for Leeds. And, you know, the pressure on Brodie Croft as it is, and we're not seeing the best of Brodie Croft. No, no, no. Far as yet, not and also yet. to the you know the fullback in that uh, Lachlan Miller, you know, uh, mm. he seems to be uh, all he seems to be doing. He seems well, to be, is he's in a Disco nightclub because well, all Ash, he does he dances about, dances about, but yeah. goes nowhere. Well, goes Ash, nowhere. Ash Handley, for example, started the season really well, yeah. but on Friday night had no chances mm. whatsoever. Mm. Yeah. You know, he's a great winger potentially, um, but just you've got to give him the ball in mm. in some sort of advantageous situation. And they, they just didn't, weren't able to do it. I'm afraid. You see, also as well, when you when you look at the way Seb Tellens out this morning, you talk about the performances. You know, Paul Wellens won't be happy the way the St. Helens going, but St. Helens will just be comfortable. They're just doing enough uh, to, to win to win the games. What they are doing, which seems yeah. to be which seems to be the, the philosophy with the Super League sides, where as long as they can do enough and they're up there where they want to be at certain parts of the season, mm-hmm. they're more than happy. But as far as leads are going, that half-back combination is not working. The full-back at this moment in time is struggling. But also as well, what I would Will say is that because they're overseas players, right? They don't. They never seem to get dropped. Never mm. seem to get no. dropped. So what I would say uh, from Leeds's point of view, you know, Hanley can fill, fill back of there at full back, or also as well, Matt Frawley's not doing it for Leeds. So why not uh, give uh, Jung Jack, Jack Sinfield an opportunity? Well, but because they're overseas players, they never get dropped. And I can reassure you, I can reassure you, not just myself, who's been out there and played in the NRL many many years ago, but also to the other British guys. If we didn't perform. Week in and week out, or, or even one week if we had an off day, <laughs> we were back. We were back in reserve grade, yeah. but unfortunately, because of overseas players, whatever they're being paid and all this sort of thing, it doesn't matter if you play good, bad, or indifferent. Mm. They always seem to get selected, which is wrong. Mm. Yes, I couldn't agree more. How yeah. many games do we give that uh, new spine uh, to click? I guess before we look at making oh, changes. None, none of them will get dropped, Jake. None mm. of them will get dropped. Mm. No, yeah. no. You know, and, and I would imagine young Jack Sinfield. Well, I'm saying young Jack. I was Jack now. Was it 21, 22? 21, probably, yeah. 21, 22 or something. You know, what does he have to do to, to, to grab an opportunity? Mm. You know, well, and, and surely with the player at the side of him in Brodie Croft, you know, and, and, and what, what he would be learning in training, all this sort of thing, it would bring the best out of him. So but I, think- I can guarantee you, it doesn't matter how bad or good or indifferent that fullback plays it in Miller and also to Matt Foley, they will not be dropped and mm. it's wrong. Mm. It's mm. is it tough to judge Leeds at the moment coming off of two games against St Helens who are known for their like um, ferocious line speed and taking away time from the halves? Well, you, you know what St Helens bring, don't you? You mm. know, so uh, so as I say, the week, the the, the, week, the the game last week, Leeds Leeds were excellent in the first half, but they just didn't take the opportunities, and, and you get found out. Yeah. And it's and it's an old it's an old cliche, an old adage. The but, most but you in- see, the thing about Saints, Gary, is uh, that they can they can suffer injuries. I mean, Lewis Dodd didn't play mm, yeah. on Friday night. Yeah. You know, and he's an integral part of their side. But, you know, they put Mos- Moses M. by there and they just it, they just get over it. You well, know, they, they, they don't seem to struggle. So, so again, Martin, the big situation is quite simple, right? Why is it Jack Sinfield then being selected, not selected for Leeds when Frawl is out of form? I'll tell you the reason why. Because I don't think Jack Sinfield's good enough. Mm. They don't, they don't, or, or they don't put the trust in him. You know, they, 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 this word in sport now is used hell of a lot. We, we need to trust the players. Well, well, if you don't give him a run, you'll never find out whether he is good enough. That, absolutely, that's the point. absolutely. But I can, I can tell you now. I can, I'll, I'll tell you now. Matt Foley will not be dropped. Miller will not be dropped because they won't trust the ones who were knocking on the door to, to you know, to, to be playing first team football. They won't trust them to do the job what they want. I'll tell you what it reminds me of going back about fifteen years. Leeds used to have a very young halfback called Luke Gale, who they didn't trust either, yeah, yeah. and never gave him any opportunities. So Luke went off to a succession of other clubs, and eventually Leeds signed him again mm. many years later. You know, and if it, it comes down to it, doesn't it? If you don't give young players a chance, Absolutely. how do you know well, how good they're yeah, going to be? Leeds out the only club 
It's, it's, oh, it's, no, it's, no. It's, it's every club. Don't well, even, Lu- even Lewis Dodd only got his break in, in, in a sense at St. Helens yeah. because Theo Farge was injured, yeah, yeah, didn't he? Yeah, and, yeah. And, and Dodd well, came through and showed what he could let's, do. Let's go, back, let's go back a few more years, a lot more years. Sam Tompkins. Yeah. Sam only got an opportunity when Wigan played Whitehaven. Do you remember? It was a Monday night. Yeah. And I think Sam scored five, six th- tries. Five or six. Five, yeah. Sam scored five or six tries, right? But that week... Right, that week Sam was Sam was supposed to go on registration on loan to Barrow. I was told he was supposed to go to Barrow, so Sam wasn't even supposed to play against White over that Monday night. Yeah, and the, and the, the saying is the rest is history. Mm. Yeah, the rest yeah. is history. But Leeds aren't the only club who won't, who won't give or won't put the trust in the British players. Once they sign the overseas players, doesn't matter how good the player, how indifferent or how rubbish the which player, actually, they will not get dropped. Which actually says to me we need to reduce the overseas quota. I totally agree. You know, I, I would, I would really do that. Mm. Uh, we'll move on to the next game, fellas. So Lee Leopards twenty six defeated uh, Featherstone Rovers fourteen. A bit of a tighter matchup compared to the other oh, and games we'd seen. Actually, um, a good game, really, and, and reflected the sort of rivalry between those two clubs that existed when they were both still in the championship. And mm. um, Manoa Wakoki Koki, mm. if that's the right way to pronounce it, I believe so. Scored, I think an, absolutely, said it, yeah. scored an absolutely brilliant try. If you've not seen that, if you've seen that I'm one, Gary, oh, check it out on YouTube or wherever it is. I mean, that was one of the tries of the season. Mm. Did he score two tries? Two, yeah, he scored yeah. two. Yeah. But, yeah. but but I think it was his it's first innocent. one yeah, yeah. that um, that he scored right from you know virtually his own line, and we made it the try of the week. I think mm. in League Express this week, well worth seeing a, a good performance by Featherstone. When you bear in mind that that club has had a few um, shocks recently, you know, mm. with the chairman deciding to stand down, Mark Campbell, and so on, and all the controversy about not having paid some recent players what they were owed, and so on. So, so that's been a hard time for Featherstone, but they really gave Lee a damn good game, I think. Mm. And, it, you know, good good for Leeford getting through, but but you know, it wasn't a one sided game. And especially after that, because uh, they upset Wakefield the week before to oh, yeah, get yeah. through, didn't they? So yeah. And Wakefield have got a, a great squad as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yes, it was a, a very, uh, very cool try. He was tiptoeing along the sideline. Yeah, he, um, how he didn't did go well to touch, I have no idea. Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. Uh, the next matchup, guys, um, we, we touched on this club last week in last week's episode, Martin, but another disappointing uh, loss for Hull FC. Oh, we had the gosh. Giants beating them 50-6. to six. We'll ask, ask Gary. Gary. I mean, neither of us have seen the game because yep. obviously I've said we didn't, we didn't see it, but, but Gary, ex hole man, still got a lot of feeling for that club. Oh, we've had it out, and uh, it's a hard watch, isn't it? it? It's a hard watch watching the black and whites at the... It's the uh, at this moment in time, and uh, and I say I'm, I'm at the derby this um, this Friday. So uh, the only the only the only hope I've got realistically is that when last year when the red and whites beat us 40 nil at the uh, MKM, and then the, the, they reversed it. But the way that the black and whites are going at this moment in time, I can't I can't see the black and whites changing whatsoever. And when you looked at last week's performance against Lee, but then when you looked at the performance against London, London were literally 35, 40 seconds away. They were, from, they were unlucky, weren't they? 35, 40 seconds away from getting their first <coughs> victory. They didn't deserve mm. it. Hull didn't deserve it. No, uh, no way made. So now, and, uh, oh, jeez. Mm. It's a hard watch. And, uh, you know, I read, I read Tony's uh, piece in the, in the League Express just, Sort of talking regarding the culture and the change of the culture. Well, I'm sorry, but um, at the end of the day, the players have got to start taking responsibility. Then players have got to start taking responsibility to their own performances, looking at themselves in the mirror as an individuals and as a team collectively. Can you remember? Let's go back a few years now. Can you remember when? Um, Witness were hammering uh, uh, Hull at half time and also to the, the, the Amadam there and the players themselves kicked Lee Radford out of the dressing room they kicked did, him out of the dressing room and said get out of here we're going to sort this out and then we all know exactly what they did the rest is history I know Tony keeps his, and as I say with the piece in the League Express yesterday talking about the culture change but I'm sorry them players quite simply mm. are not good enough to put the black and white jersey on some of them are a disgrace and also too they, they, they don't care about the club mm. and Tony could go on it's going to take time take time and time well the, the question is how long will the whole fans get if they get walloped this Friday which everybody is anticipating to be honest with them because Ulke are they beat them 22-0 the first, the first game of the season. Mm. They'll want to make sure, they will want to make sure the bragging rights stays with the red and whites. They want to make sure that they don't do the same mistake as what they did last season. They know how bad Hull are. Plus as well, they'll be paying massive respect to the great man himself again for law. So it's going to be an emotional event. Mm. They will want to make sure they can rub the noses even deeper into it for the black and whites. But it all depends on the patience, I guess, with Adam Pearson and the CEO in James Clark. But at the end of the day, 
Coaches don't make players, it's the players who make coaches. And, and, and I won't never ever change away from that philosophy. But then players, they need to stand up now. Stand up and to be counted and start playing what you're paid to do. Mm. And that is playing decent, good, smart rugby league. Mm. The only hope, in my view, for, for all this Friday, Gary, is if full KR... Take it lightly, and uh, and you know, and, and yeah. they're a bit complacent, thinking that they're going to win easily, and and obviously that can backfire on you if it happens. But it, you know, obviously Willie Peters is going to ensure that doesn't yeah. happen. Well, I've you said imagine. Martin, uh, last year they beat them fourteen 0 didn't they? And then, yeah, yeah. And then, and then the, 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 the second to third the last game, the black and whites turned them over. The they did. And whites, and maybe maybe that attitude was wrong. But yeah. I can guarantee you, it will be wrong this week. But no you, 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 you know, you, you you wonder how many, you know, how uh, how, how long it can go on. Before Tony Smith is under real pressure from from Adam Pearson, I would imagine he's under pressure now. Don't worry about that. Uh, you it would have thought be, so. He will be you? under pressure now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he will. Because yeah. Adam has shown himself. You know the way he got rid of um, Lee Radford. You know in that mm. on on television a few yeah, years yeah. ago. But also, as well, but also as well, Martin. Right? And what, what I will say is here, the fans can't blame Adam Pearson. Mm. Quite simply, because Adam Pearson has backed the coach, he's backed the players. You know, mm. so whatever uh, the, the contracts they want or payment what they want, he's brought in the quality of what the coaches, all the coaches have asked for. So Adam Pearce is no Adam Pearson is no fault of this. It's quite for me. It's quite simply them players. Mm. Yeah, some yeah. of them, some of them, are not worth putting that black and white jersey on. Mm. They're no. a disgrace. No, definitely. Well, I hope, they're, disgrace. Wa- I hope they're watching this podcast and. Uh... Right to it, Gary. I hope they are because it's because it's quite simple. You players, you players, start taking a bit of pride in that club. Take plenty of pride in that jersey and do what you're paid to do, and that is play a decent quality rugby league and give something to them whole all FC fans that they're proud to and they want to shout about. Mm. Simple as that. They're in a dire state at the moment. It does seem like there's a, a few a bit of an attitude problem on the field. Not much effort being shown. Um, is when when clubs do sack a coach mid season. Are you for or against that idea? Would you rather they wait till the end of the season so they can have a fresh start? Well, well, I tell you what. It, uh, do you know if, if 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 they get rid of Tony? Oh, if Tony, uh, well, let, let's just say they get hammered 40, 30, 40 nil, and maybe Tony might walk and what have you. Well, I tell you what. If Craig Bellamy come in there, if Nathan Cleary came in there, if Wayne Bennett came in there, whoever the, the so-called top quality coach from Australia, came, they won't change that lot around. No. They won't because the players have got to start taking responsibility for their own performances. Mm. Mm. You know they can't keep blaming everybody else and you know and the, whatever excuses they're coming up with. Mm. You know it, it's abs- They are pathetic rugby league players. Mm. They mm. are the pathetic rugby league players, and they're not fit to wear that black and white jersey. So now, so now, start start doing what you should be doing. What you're what you're very well paid to do, and that is start putting on. Performances for these supporters and yeah. for your own personal pride, and also to to save a job uh, in, for for Tony Smith because Tony Smith is a quality coach. He's proven that, and Tony Smith doesn't become a bad coach overnight. Mm. No, he doesn't. No. no, he doesn't. So the players have got to start taking responsibility, and hopefully, as a black and white man, it starts on Friday. Mm. No, absolutely. Well said, Gary. Yeah, uh, well said. <laughs> uh, we'll move on to the next game. Uh, so we had Castleford twenty-eight defeated Batley fourteen. Another tight match up. It was good yeah. to see. Yeah, Batley. I thought they played. Yeah, quite level well. at half time again, wasn't it? Mm. Um, and Cass played down the slope in the second half, so yeah, that's why the wolves that, wasn't that, it? that came to the rescue. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was it was always going to be a difficult game for Castleford this one, and and Batley. Funny enough, Gary, you've just been talking about Hull, the players not putting the you know not not playing to their potential. The Batley team always seems to do that, yeah, doesn't yeah, it? it yeah, they always yeah. play to their potential, no matter what, and they ought to be very proud of that. And it's a you know. I mean, again, I wasn't there, but I'm sure it was a great game, and um, and Castleford survived, you know, as we expected them to, but not 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 easily. Well, do you know what, Martin, as well, because I said in my column last week, and I tipped Batley to beat him actually. And do you know what the most important call last Sunday was? Who won the toss? Because yeah. who was going to go down the hill the second half? And uh, yeah. and when I saw the score ten nil, I thought, geez, I, 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 I Batley going down the coming up anyway. I would imagine Craig Lingard, when he knew that they won the toss and they were going down the hill in the second half, mm. I bet he were absolutely delighted because he's <laughs> worth that hill. I can reassure you because I played there plenty of time myself. That hill is worth 10, 12, 14 points. Yeah. It's an absolute nightmare, honestly. Yeah. It's an absolute nightmare. But hey, listen, full credit to Batley. I think, you know, I know Kevin Nicholas very well on Paul Rice, so they're doing a great job at that they club. Are. They're doing a fantastic <coughs> job at that club. The fans are absolutely delighted. Mox has taken over uh, where Lingard has left him off. So, 
yeah, absolutely great. Great performance from Batley, but just that extra bit of quality, what Castleford had, going down the hill in the second half, mm. and they got the victory in the, in the, in the, in the hat for the, uh, the quarter-final draw who the play Wigan. Mm. Yeah. As a, as a in-play kicker, like, do you have to change your, your approach when you're doing those long kicks with a, a bit of a downhill slope? Uh, not really, mm. not really. No, because uh, because the point of view is what you do know is, is that it's going to go it goes fast, so it just makes it harder for the opposition. Yeah. Realistically, yeah. from there going up the hill, you may have to change because if, if there's a bit of a wind, yeah. you know that's a little bit different. Where where from a point of view, uh, you may look to maybe putting that, the ball. In, in the air, you'd say, "No, I'm not doing that. You know, mm. I'll just keep it more low, low on the ground, yeah, and but just, it, it, just kick it that little bit harder." But I can reassure you, that hill at Batley is an absolute nightmare for the opposition. It, it, it is a delightful <laughs> place to visit, Jake. Oh, Obviously, is, as an yeah, Aussie, it's, you've it's, it's, you've yeah. not been there. But yeah. my advice to you is to, you know, you're here for a couple of years. Make sure you get a trip to Batley mm, in okay. in you know one weekend and, uh, and go and see a game there because yeah. and I'd say that to anybody watching this. Oh, that, yeah. it's a, it's it's a great place to watch rugby league. You you're on top of the action, um, mm. and it and and you you know that Batley are always going to play with lots of pride and. And, and the fans who you know get behind them. Oh, it's they a, are, yeah. do, do, it's do, a great place do, to go. Do you like a beer as well, Jake? Do you like, love do you like a, beer. a beer? Love a beer. Oh well, I tell you what, <laughs> Ke- Kevin Nichols and Paul Allison will look after you very well. And also, yeah. to, in that bar after the game behind the sticks, it's a great atmosphere. It you is. Know, yes. the fans, whether we lose or draw, what the Batley fans and it's same. It's Kevin and Paul and so, as long as they know that them players are giving hundred percent, not just for the coach, not just for themselves, but also to the supporters, mm. they are more than happy. Obviously, they want to win more games than what they lose from there. But the place itself, professionally run, it's a great atmosphere. Get yourself there and after the game you'll enjoy uh, behind the bar there and uh, I'm sure Kevin you'll buy him a few pints I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure he'll enjoy me saying that oh, <laughs> mate, mate, you he's got... not tight Kevin don't worry about that he's not tight <laughs> no, that's awesome mate you've uh, really sold it to me there so yeah I'll, I'll be there um, we're moving on we've got two more games to get through here fellas uh, Warrington uh, 42 defeated London nil another back to back match up but this time it was in Warrington um, yes it wasn't quite such a big uh, margin as the previous week and that was good for London because they didn't have any of their lone players did they mm. that they would um, had the previous week when they conceded 60 points against Warrington yeah. so that's progress of a sort isn't it but mm. the, the result was never going to be in doubt was it let's face it no no yeah, I would imagine Sam's words after the game quite simple wins a win we'll move on yeah no absolutely and uh, we, I'm sure they'll be looking ahead to some of their tougher matchups as we said they've had a few or quite an easy fixture to start the yes. season uh, I think you might have mentioned it in your column this week um, you know we can't forget they won eight in a row to start last season so yeah, we can't yeah. get ahead of ourselves yeah um, but yes, it'll be interesting to see when they do. Do you know, what, you know, you know what I heard uh, last week as well from one of the, uh, uh, the, the, the journey, journeymen or one of the guys on Tele or Radio and just said, now <clears throat> we've got to call Warrington side Sam Burgess's Warrington. Mm. Right. Well, I'll tell What's you that? what, once you start, once you start hitting the. Um, the uh, the floor a few times like uh, like we know Warrington can do. Yeah. I bet Sam will be saying you know, don't call it Sam Burgess Warrington, just call it Warrington Wolves. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, don't worry about that year because uh, as we all know, well, the old saying is it Warrington's year and all that, and they're going okay. What, I would imagine Sam will be comfortable like Paul Wellens is at this moment in time there at Warrington. But uh, hey, listen, they've not uh, they've not played anybody. Not well, played put, Saints uh, or Wigan yet. Yeah, have they've they? played no. Catalans. We know what happened there. They've got Catalans this week. So uh, hey, listen, it's going to be uh, it's going to be pressurised times at times. Yeah, so, yeah. Come, mm. come for Warrington, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. Mm. yeah. And in uh, the final matchup of the weekend, fellas, we had uh, Catalans 40 defeated Halifax 4. Um, easy win, wasn't yeah, it? And uh, I think Halifax had hoped to really challenge them, but mm. they didn't do very effectively, did they, really? And it was uh, probably a bit easier than the Catalans expected, yeah. I would think. Mm. Yeah, definitely a, a good game to build momentum for them, perhaps. Uh, yeah. Now, a lot of the talk uh, from the weekend is how low the crowd attendances were. Um, has the cup lost its aura? Well, it has. It it it, it has in the early rounds, hasn't it? And um, you know wh- whether the the attendances will still be low for the quarter final ties, which are quite tasty. Actually, mm. there are some very good quarter final ties coming up in mid April. Um, but I think it's a mistake to play the Challenge Cup early in the season. Yeah. You know, the, the, the great days of the Challenge Cup in the old winter season was when it would when it the first round was always played in February and it the season started at the end of August so by the time the Challenge Cup came along the season was probably about five months old and what you found was that the fans of clubs who weren't going to win the championship or you know who had you know clearly you know that their hopes of winning the title had gone they 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 
generated a renewed interest with the Challenge Cup, and it was a, another trophy that they were in with a chance of winning. And you often found in those days that clubs that were pretty lowish down in the league table performed incredibly well in the Cup. And the best example, actually, was going back to 1967, when Featherstone won the Cup, having finished 20th in a 30-team league, and Barrow were who they beat in the final, and they finished 15th. You know, and that would be like Halifax and Bradford playing in the cup final this year. Mm. So, you know, it, 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 it worked in those days. Um, the, the cup final was always played in the week, you know, successive weeks with the championship final, and both games got enormous crowds. But we've moved right away from that since we've switched to summer. And it's been a continuous progress of decline for the Challenge Cup. And it's so disappointing because it's such a great competition, such a great trophy, such a, a great day at Wembley. And the people who run the game seem to have no idea of how to restore its glory. I think it's heartbreaking the way that the Challenge Cup is, uh, you know, gets disrespected. I do, and, and I still think the Challenge Cup is the best cup competition in World Rugby League. And, uh, you know, f from, a, from a player's point of view, from a fan's point of view, a director's point of view, you know, but the way that uh, it's, it's been treated, the way it's been disrespected by everybody, uh, from the people at the, at the RFL and, and I guess at clubs as well. And, you know, nowadays, from a point of view with the crowds, it's not in the season ticket uh, package now, so they've got to pay an extra, extra fee to watch the Challenge Cup. So... And, and how are we going to bring it back? I'm not so sure, Martin, how we can uh, bring back the glory days of the Challenge Cup like it was, because as we know, back in the days from the last 20, 25, 30 years, you know, the, everybody going for working men's clubs, once, once Wembley had finished, everybody were rebooking the, the, the Monday for the following 12 months and all this sort of thing. So how we bring that glory days back, how we bring that, that look back for the Challenge Cup uh, I, I don't know, to be honest well, with you, but, but, until, but until we start treating it with the respect, what it fully deserves, then I'm afraid to say... Gary, Gary you, you for, you're forgetting one thing, aren't you? forgetting that IMG are going to tell us how to do it? <laughs> do we have to talk? Do we have to talk about them? <laughs> well, do we have, do we, hey, I tell you what, probably best not. Well, 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 let me just say this: and as as they the, did the, the two years consultation for nothing, as we know now that two year consultation is over. Now they're getting four hundred fifty thousand pound per season yeah. for the next ten years. By the way, right for the next ten years. Don't you think it's about time to start doing something then? Well, well four hundred fifty grand. I do. Come on, ING. Come on, you got a ten-year deal, four and a half million quid. Start doing something Show for the greatest. Us. Start doing something for the greatest game of all, and let's start with the Challenge Cup now. Then show us what you made of. Absolutely, you show know. us something. <laughs> uh, speaking of, um, you know, I guess the exposure of the game and and going forward, the RFL is likely to make a decision this week uh, around a broadcasting deal for the championship. Uh, I understand there was a vote that took place yes. last week, which uh, clubs T voted against. Down. Yeah, um, seven votes to six, I believe. Yeah. Is the final vote count, um, Martin? What's the what's the way forward here? Do you do you think there will end up being well, a, a what, broadcasting um, deal? What happened was that Premier Sports um, are demerging from Viaplay, who who took them over about two or three years ago. Viaplay had no interest in rugby league whatsoever. They're they're, they're not a British based company, uh, so it was a, it seems to have been a mistake that mer that taking over. Premier Sports are coming away from via play, and they are very interested in, in broadcasting rugby league. But what they want to do, what they want to do is um, show one game a week, but then show every other game in the championship on on on, um, on a stream on their own Premier stream. Um, and the clubs don't want that because basically they wouldn't be getting any money for it, and Premier's um, desire. What, what Premier want? The Premier's rationale for for doing that is that they want every championship supporter subscribing to their channel. And if you know that your team is going to be on every week, either on the main channel or on streaming, you're more likely to take out a subscription to Premier Sports. So I can see their logic in what they're proposing, but the clubs are saying, "Hold on a minute! If if the fans can subscribe to Premier and see every single game." Why bother coming to the game? And, I, you know, that's absolutely right. Now, so they've rejected it by a narrow margin, but they've rejected it. The, 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 the Rugby Football League Board of Directors, I think, will decide this week what to do about that. They'll probably go back to Premier and see whether they can get an alternative mm. deal on the table. Um, I mean, personally, I think one game a week showed perhaps on a Sunday afternoon or Saturday afternoon, whatever, whatever time it might be, 
would be ideal, um, leaving all the rest of the clubs, you know, to, to play their games without them being streamed. Um, and, you know, covering all the games as the season, all the clubs as the season unfolds. Um, but whether the Premier will go for that, I'm not quite so sure. Mm. What do you think, Gary? Well, also, too, how much money, how much money they give it us? You know, Peanut, peanuts, really. <laughs> not, <laughs> you know, a limited amount. Yeah, well, well, 50, 50 grand a year or something yeah, like well, that. Well, it's pathetic, isn't it? Really? Yeah. It's absolutely yeah, pathetic. It was like with the, the last deal. Did, the clubs over a two-year period, did they, did they get about £3,000? So, no. Yeah. You know, we should be selling ourselves short. And no. I was going to ask the question, well, are they, are they going to be playing again on a Monday night, which was a massive inconvenience. It not was. Just, not just for the clubs and the players, but also to the supporters. So, if they are going to play... I don't Saturday, think they were planning to play on Monday night, <laughs> Right, right. With so, this yeah, so they are going to play Saturday afternoon, Sunday afternoon. Yeah. That's fair enough. But at the end of the day, let's not sell ourselves short. Let's mm. not sell ourselves short. Simple yeah, as that. I mm. think I, I, I agree. Think with that. I think the championship has got plenty to offer, and, and, and I think yeah, at that level, you know, it, it brings it brings some decent rugby league. You of know, course, it does. You know, and so I, I think it, you know if they, if they do it, if the RFL do it right and the clubs do it right from there, get what what you can from there and get the championship out there, but don't sell yourself short. Mm. Couldn't no, agree absolutely. more, mate. Um, now Wigan have locked in uh, pretty much all of their coaches staff for a further seven years I believe uh, the deal is that's Matty Peach Sean O'Loughlin and Tom Lulawai uh, obviously great news uh, for Wigan who've experienced so much success over the last couple of years oh, I, you know and uh, <clears throat> some people sent me messages and said oh, Scotty what are Wigan doing I went oh, no, what do you mean what are Wigan doing I think it's fantastic yeah. because it, when you look at it, when you, when you look at it from from top to bottom, you look at uh, you know Chris Alinsky and, and, and Sean Wayne, they're all well, Wigan DNA. Mike Pete's been there uh, with, with the academy for the last I think ten, 10 or twelve uh, years. From there, Lachlan's been there, you know, t- t- since he was a kid. Lulawai's been there for ten years. I think I, I think it's, it, it's it's absolutely fantastic what Wigan mm. have done because what Wigan are doing, what we can do and realise now is that with the squad what they've got. The players that are coming through the academy, the recruitment is, is is brilliant with the quality players what they bring, and also as well when people are coming back to the sell by dates because when when we looked at it, what, what it was five or six years ago now when Sean Wayne was in charge, they let Sam Tompkins go, they let McAlorum go, they let John Berman go, realizing hold on these guys may be coming past the sell by date, yeah. we've, got, we've got plenty coming through the academy, you know, so we can so we can bring them on, but also <clears throat> from giving the coaches a seven year deal. Wigan the success what they know quick because they are going to be the best team for the next three or five years and mm. that continuity uh, from there whatsoever the vault uh, Wigan through and through it's all cherry and white uh, in the uh, in, in the blood system why not give them the seven year deal because Wigan Wigan aren't going to be, Wigan aren't going to fail no. Wigan aren't going to fail and you look from the top from there what Chris, Lad- what Chris Ladlinski brings to that club everybody's happy at that club everybody's coming in to work with a smile on their face mm. and also too the fans are delighted because when when under the Maguire situation uh, when he was coaching when we looked at Sean Wayne they were boring they were boring Marty Pete has come in big gamble by the way big gamble oh, big yeah, gamble. Yeah. But, but but Marty Pete is wigging through and through so he knew the uh, the position from a pressure point of view but also as well the smart move what he did because um, at, uh, Ian Lanigan he wasn't happy the way that the style of play Wigan was playing under Sean Wayne so that's why Sean Wayne left but they wanted a new style of play they brought in Lee Breers mm. how good was Wigan to watch under Lee Breers and now Lulai's been brought in now Breers has gone back to Australia I think this situation at Wigan is absolutely professional ideal it's smart and one thing for sure one thing for sure under Matty Pete Sean O'Loughlin and Thomas Lulai the academy what they've got the recruitment what they bring in the players who let go this year, what they've let Smithies go and Kai Paul because okay then, yeah, we've got players coming through who are just mm. as good. If they want to leave, we'll get a nice transfer fee from from the from the NRL, get nicely some money in, in the bank from there. I just think Wigan at this moment in time are above everybody else, both on and off the field, and I think this is great what Wigan have done by giving them three guys a seven year deal. Everybody knows where the stands, and mm. I can reassure you, Wigan at this moment in time, and Wigan for many, many years, will be a very successful, happy place. I couldn't Definitely. agree more, Gary. And uh, if I was somebody like Adam Pearson, I think I would take a tent over to Wigan and sleep out for about a week, just finding I think out. Take more than a week, Mike. To be finding honest with you. out everything. <laughs> that, take more than a week. Well, yeah, but you know, yeah. Wigan have set the template Absolutely. for success. Absolutely. Now, if Absolutely. you know, if 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 you're another club that's 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 not that doesn't enjoy that same level of success you need to find out how we can do it yes. mm. and you need to if you can't beat them join them if you if you can't create your own successful uh, legacy then c- copy what we can do obviously 
with, with the with the academy, with their community work, the way they draw in fans and so on, the way they appoint people, everything that they do seems to be smart. Do you know you were just going to say, Martin? We used that word earlier about half an hour ago regarding players. Wigan trust Matty Pete. They mm-hmm. do that. Yes, yes. They they, tr- they, they trust Sean O'Loughlin. They trust yeah. Lula White, and most importantly. To trust all the players who yeah. put that shirt on. Mm. Yeah, and and the cream on the cake actually is that they've got now a, another extremely wealthy owner in Mike Danson, mm. and they've um, and Mike Danson owns not just Wigan Warriors but Wigan Athletic Football Club. So actually, Wigan now will get a much better deal on the stadium. Absolutely, yeah. You know, they, they they won't be they won't be relegated to being second class occupiers of that stadium, mm. which I think is quite important as well. And the good thing is, like the the future of Wigan is secured. That's just you know only going to benefit their retention and recruitment going yeah, forward. Yeah. Players know what they're signing up for, and yeah, great. See, news. also as well, Jay, the top overseas players don't want to come to Wigan. Mm. That's a big draw card, you know, yeah. because Wigan, you know, Wigan are going to be they are, well the head and shoulders above everybody else. And, and I said in the column before the season started when I met my predictions, Wigan are going to dominate certainly for the next three to five years, you know, and then there'll be there'll be a new batch coming through. Mm. But the most important factor is with the with the overseas players, the big names of the overseas players they will want to come to Wigan because they're well run both on and off the field and they know they're going to win things mm. but at the end of the day Gary other clubs have got to compete with them because I you agree, remember yeah, you remember yeah. when Wigan dominated in the late 80s and I that. early 90s <laughs> I, I mean you know I, Wigan yes. won the cup eight years in yeah, a row yeah, from yeah, yeah. The, well, 1988 they won, they won everything they won everything yeah, yeah. And, and, and people eventually got bored with seeing them doing mm-hmm. it and yeah, that's yeah. and that's not their fault obviously no but, it's not no, no. but, but but other clubs have got to have got to raise their standards. Mm. You know whether it's whether I mean you look at a, t- a team like Hull. Hull should be at least as big as Wigan, shouldn't they? Because they're a, a, a major city with potential talent coming through their ranks. Yep. They ought to be really killing it, um, but they're not. And um, you know, th- unfortunately. Well, they've, 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 well, let me just say this. The, yeah. the, the, the first big thing, what you've got to say about Wigan and Hull, right? And, and I saw your piece last week regarding the players who have left Hull or have been allowed to leave Hull. The recruitment. Yeah, yeah. The recruitment at Hull has got to be one of the big, big questions why everything's big, going so wrong. It's a big failing. And, why everything's and again, going so they, wrong. They don't bring young players through, do they? No, no they don't. No. The, they don't you, trust them. You, no. You, you, McNamara. Why is it McNamara still at Hull? And, yeah. and, no, and no disrespect to Morgan Smith, but Morgan Smith, he's been to more clubs than what Jack Nicholas has got you yeah, know, yeah, in, in his yeah, golf bag. Yeah. Morgan, Smith, Morgan Smith is not good enough for Hull. Why is it young McNamara still at Hull? Yeah, he's the, good enough to play for the black and whites. They, they let young players go, don't but they? But again, it's that word trust. They, mm. they don't trust. Trust him, where and he, they he don't can develop play, them to the, the and he can play week in and week out at the standard what they want. Well, you've got yeah. to give him a bit. You've got to give him a bit of time and, and that bit of trust. Yeah, mm. yeah. But Hull yeah. don't do that. Hull don't, mm. don't absolutely they don't do that. But Wigan, they are setting they are setting the marker down for everybody to follow. But I can reassure you, Wigan won't just stay at that level. They'll be up that ladder. They're up that ladder. And they're up yeah. ladder. fair play to him. And I say Chris Linsky, since he's taken over there at the CEO, took a bit of time to get where they are. But now this seven-year deal for this coaching staff has set out a warning to everybody else. Hey, listen. We're not going nowhere. Mm. Yeah, wonder in seven years' time if we might see someone like a Nathan Cleary come over and, and play for Wigan. Given that he's our girlfriend, why not? Plays why not? His for... girlfriend's over here. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. why not? Hey, listen. <laughs> yeah. you, uh, I'll be. tell you what. You you can't tell me. Uh, well, I will tell you. I, you I, I will tell you. I would imagine Radlinski or somebody at Wigan or Sean uh, a couple of couple of quiet ones with Nathan Cleary. Hey, listen. Mm. If you're ready to come over here in four, four or five years' time. This is a place for you. Yeah. You mark my words. Yeah, you absolutely. mark my words. Don't rule it out, Nathan Cleary, mm. coming to Wigan in four or five years' time. Mm. You've heard it here first. Yep. <laughs> heard it here first. Yeah. The Gary guarantee. Um, now, uh, we've had some sad news over the past week or so. The RL community uh, lost one of the greats, um, Hulk KR great. Uh, Phil Lowe's uh, passed away. Um, Gary, what were some of your memories of, of Phil? <sighs> oh, jeez. Well, this this just big strapping man, you know, how, how mobile he was, how quick he was, you know, and, and nobody could seem to get anywhere near him. And uh, but just the respect from all the opponents, uh, you know, what uh, what what, what Phil had, and also too from from, from what he's won, from the, the Ashes in seventy, he won the World Cup in seventy two, he scored the winning try for, for Manly, played for Manly there for three years, an, an absolute uh, legend out there. And uh, you don't become uh, get that word legend out in Australia if, if you don't uh, if you don't uh, you don't play at the highest level and you, and 
you don't perform on a week-to-week basis. But uh, but the size of the man, the speed of the man, but also too off the field as well. Always giving you good advice, great advice. Always had a smile on his face. Loved the game um, to, to death. Did Phil. Yeah, very, very sad that his passes. But I'll tell you what. As what I've seen here, I didn't see. I haven't seen many clips of Dick Odar, but I can re- I can reassure you, Dick Odar and Phil Law are the best two second rowers Very similar. this country has ever produced. Yeah, has ever ever produced, and he was literally poetry in motion. Absolute wonderful to watch. When I mentioned earlier regarding players who you would pay to watch and say, "Hey, listen." I tell you, I just want to see this guy go 50, 60 yards through a nice little gap where maybe Roger Millwall's created or a Len Casey, this sort of thing, and seeing this man burst 50, 60 yards. People used to pay money to watch a great man. Well, I remember seeing him, he made his debut as a 17-year-old, and I remember seeing him play as a 17-year-old against Wakefield back in the 1960s. And you immediately saw what everybody was talking yeah. about. You know, you know, people had talked about this young kid, and he was built, I mean, his, 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 his incredible physical you know presence was there even at that age i've never seen such a young player be so well developed actually gary that yeah, that was the yeah, amazing yeah, thing yeah. but but as you say he, he ran like grease lightning and mm-hmm. if you if you were in his way my goodness he was a <laughs> tough man to tackle i'll tell you what as well mate. mal mal really loved him as well oh yeah mal absolutely you know mal took him to uh, to manly from there he yeah. imagine that 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 uh, mal at loose forward and phil law the second row the oh. opposition must have been absolutely terrified not just because of malcolm what he do to you we, 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 in his tackling uh, mm. technique from a point of view but from a creativity point of yeah. view do you know what I mean And uh, it, it'd be great to get into a time machine wouldn't it and oh, go back oh, and, boy, oh, boy. and see those players at Manly would it ever mm. oh, would it? and yeah. Steve Norton joined them as well and Gary yeah. Stevens again creative loose forward created uh, yeah. number sevens but uh, but as far as Phil Lowe goes I tell you what uh, him and Dick the best second rows that's, uh, for me that's ever played for Great Britain yes. and also as well you would pay money to go watch him yeah mm. condolences to his family and, yeah. uh, and I, I, I would imagine there'd be a great because uh, it's a big down on Friday, and I know they paid uh, uh, respects to, uh, uh, to to the big man last Friday. But I would imagine this Friday it will be it will be the uh, the greatest respects everybody can show for him. Both both sides of the river over, over there at home because well, but, what he brought to rugby league was sensational. Yeah, it will be emotional, but it'll be time for celebration for the. It'll be man. very similar to when Johnny Whiteley yeah, absolutely. died, weren't it? Absolutely, I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah. Well, when you look at the three three massive icons over there, number side Johnny Whiteley. Roger Mill Ward and now Phil Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah. Now, yeah, our condolences go out to uh, his family and friends. Um, now, fellas, we've talked a lot about the Challenge Cup, but we've also had uh, the quarterfinals draw uh, officially announced. So uh, we have Hull KR taking on Lee, uh, Castleford taking on Wigan, Saints taking on Warrington, and uh, Catalans taking on the Giants. Um, I guess uh, in the first matchup, fellas, I might get your early predictions. Uh, Hull KR taking on Lee. Gary, who, who do you have in that one? Uh, this is revenge time for Ulkis the Rovers, yep. isn't it? You know, and uh, they'll say Ulkis, ah, well, no, re- revenge isn't the word. Revenge will be the word. Yep. You know, yeah. well, a yeah. golden point. There's no two ways about it. It will be revenge, and uh, again, it'll be a great atmosphere. Lee will take plenty of fans over there because, you know, they don't want to be uh, the one season uh, opens of winning the Challenge Cup from there. So it's going to be a great game. It's going it? to be a great entertaining game. A yeah. great entertaining game, and Lee will want to go there and say, hey, listen, you know, we're going to make it sure. It wasn't a fluke last year. Absolutely, yeah. and we could keep hold of the Challenge Cup, but Ulkis, ah, They'll be wanting it uh, revenge. Great entertaining game. But mm. I'm going to go Hull KR to beat them. And I'm going to go Hull KR to beat them by 10 points. OK. Mm. Martin? Uh, yeah, I think Hull KR will probably win that one. Just be- mm. because of home advantage, really. I think f- for them in particular, home advantage is really quite important. They've got a fanatical crowd behind them. I mean, if, if, if this game doesn't sell out Craven Park, Absolutely. I don't know what Challenge Cup game will. Yeah. Uh, because Lee will take a lot of a big following, I'm fairly sure. Mm. And, it, you know... I know the Hull KR fans won't get in on the season tickets, but for goodness sake, you know, whatever it costs, get behind your team on this occasion mm-hmm. because it's going to be a fantastic game. And uh, But I think Hull KR will just sneak it, probably by about four points, though. Yep. Only just, you yep. know, I wouldn't I wouldn't risk my life on it, put it that way. Mm. Yeah, it would be interesting to see what the lineups look like. Obviously, yeah. Leah's still down a few men to injury. No, um, mm. John Asiata, no Edwin Apape at the moment. So mm. whether those two can manage to get fit by that uh, matchup, it could change the outcome. Well, but April, you never know. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, the next matchup, uh, where are we? Uh, Castleford and Wigan. Prediction, Gary? <laughs> <laughs> there's only one winner here. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's only one winner here. Wigan love the Challenge Cup, but they love all the Cups. They love all the trophies, don't they? Yeah. You know, so, quite simply, Wigan too good. And, uh, well, you can see Wigan easy winning by 30 plus. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was the first game of the season, wasn't it? Castleford v Wigan. Yeah. And Wigan won that one convincingly. And, uh, 
you can't see anything else, can you really? No, no. Uh, the other game, uh, Saints versus Warrington. Mm, yes, this is the first pressure point. game. Yeah. This is the big pressure game for Sam Burgess's Warrington. We've got to call it Sam Burgess Warrington. Yeah, yeah. Up till now, yeah. until now, until Sam tells us to, to stop saying that, you know. Yeah. So yeah, this will be <laughs> this will be the market game of Warrington's season. Okay, they've got Catalans and a couple more games uh, before this one, but uh, they've got the Saints. Saints love the Challenge Cup as well. They mm. will want to make sure that uh, they're knocking on the door themselves of uh, not just uh, getting to the final but winning the trophy so uh, yeah St. Helens I think they'll have too much I think Saints pack of forwards it'll just be a little bit too much for Warrington mm. at, uh, big pressure game for Sam but I think Saints I'm going Saints by 10 yeah. yeah I think I'd go similar but you know this is this could be a statement win for Warrington if they can get it if yeah. you know the, 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 there's, there's still a lot of people reserving judgement about Sam at, at Warrington basically because they've not really had any really tough games apart from that trip to Catalans um, that, that they had in the first game of the season mm. uh, and they play okay. Catalans again this week of course but apart from that they've beat they've, they've had plenty of wins but not against top sides um, so if they could beat St Helens it would be a hell of a statement mm. and I'm sure that uh, Sam will be doing everything he possibly can to ensure that they do win. It's also as well, what's making me laugh a little bit is because you know people saying uh, Sam Burgess is warranted. Well, when I when I look at the squad, it's mainly Daryl Powell's team. Yes, mm. yeah. It's mainly, Darryl, yeah. you know, it's mainly Darryl Powell's team, you know. So, so them players, you know, obviously Sam, Sam's brought in something different. You know, they talk about the mentality and and this sort of thing, and stop being soft mentally and uh, whatever your cliches is, is coming out with or whatever uh, psychological sayings he's coming out with from there. But uh, this is this is the Sam Burgess's team. This is Darryl Powell's team, mm. you know. So, uh, so they them them players, them players. When it comes there, boys, there. When it comes pressurized situations. Are they going to be able to handle it? Well, my, that's, what, that's what we're going to find out. Well, that's what we're going to find out, Martin. Yeah. And, and, my, and my my situation, uh, what I think about it, is quite simple. I don't think Sam Burgess can change them mentally when it becomes... He, he won't be able to change them mentally. As player might be able to change them mentally as, as, as people in this issue, but when it comes to the pressure situation for a full 80 minutes, mm. when it's required out there, he won't be able to change that. Mm. No. So the Absolutely. question is going to be, the, 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 to them players, is quite simple. Can you better yourself, instead of being... A 40, 50, 60 minute player, can you turn yourself around to mm. an 80 minute player? We haven't seen that yet. No. Mm, absolutely. Um, and the final matchup uh, for the, the Challenge Cup quarterfinals uh, coming up in a few weeks' time Catalans versus the Giants. Um, what do we expect from this one? Huddersfield have had a big win yeah, uh, over the weekend. They've had we a funny season so far, Huddersfield. Yeah. They've had some good wins. Good win at Lee. Yeah. Um, good win, obviously, against Hull in the, in the Cup, although against a poor Hull side. Um, Adam Swift scoring four tries, ex Hull player, of course, mm. who will let go. Um, I think Huddersfield will give it a good, sh- a good shot at Catalans, but I can't see them winning that game. Mm. You know, the Catalans will, uh, I think, be a bit too strong for them overall, yeah. personally. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's interesting. Theo Farge playing against the team he played for the last played with for the last two years um, at Huddersfield, and uh, you know, we'll 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 have to see how it goes. Mm. Yeah, Huddersfield like Leeds, huffing and puffing, aren't they? You yeah. know, they're all they right for, they're all right for one game and then they're pretty useless uh, for, for the for the next game. Yeah. No, no consistency. What Ian Watson wants from there, and I just think the Catalans forwards and the kicky game of Abdul and the creativity of Theo Farge will mm. be too much for the Giants. I think Catalans are doing by about sixteen points. Mm. Mm. Yeah, okay. Uh, we'll move on to some NRL related news. There's been a lot of talk this week about uh, the state of Leichhardt Oval. Obviously, we watched the the match over what's the weekend. With it? What's some of it? This <laughs> is the guy <laughs> who played the art stadium. This is the guy who played. <laughs> quite a bit of his career there. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, obviously he played for Balmain. State of the art, yeah, but like, uh, you know, I know it's a, uh, a bit of a dump at this moment. Well, a, bit, a bit of a dump when I was there, to be honest with you. Yeah. 85, 86, 87, but I'll tell you what, it was a great atmosphere, a great place. You know, we mm. made it a fortress for ourselves and they got behind us and and, uh, and after the games and, and after trading, they all wimp as well, what just behind the post on the right-hand side, which obviously the fans and uh, nobody uh, really went in there because it was just for the players and coaches staff. But, but no, like that, uh, Great stadium, and you know one of the great memories when uh, I was playing there. We played against St George, and I think there were about twenty thousand people in there, and whatever. It was a top of the table clash, and, and uh, I've never never heard noise like it before. And it was one of my one of my best moments because I don't know if you've, if you've seen it when Ray Warren I kick a goal from the sidelines and we go two points up, and Ray Warren comes out with the uh, the great commentary by saying, "Gary Schofield, you are the Lord Mayor of Balmain," because I kicked, <laughs> I kicked this goal, but I want the Lord yeah. Mayor of Balmain about five minutes later because they 
they were uh, they were two points in front of us, St. Uh, St. George, and about 90 seconds to go, and we got a penalty, 48, 48 out, and PC went, what do you reckon? I went, yeah, I'll kick this. Mm. Oh, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> I made a great fun of myself, and Ray Warren just changed it. He says, I don't think he's a lone bear about me. He hasn't been the lone bear about me for too long. We got beat yeah. by two points, but uh, uh, but no, great memories at uh, the Leichhardt, whether it's playing, uh, say, in the Old Winfield Cup, whether we're playing in the Panasonic Cup, uh, mm. the Panasonic Cup on a Wednesday night <laughs> in the semi-finals and finals. Brilliant, uh, brilliant atmosphere. It, it and is. Hopefully, hopefully, it's going to get the development what it, rec- it requires. I've mm-hmm. only ever been there once, mm-hmm. but it was a great experience to go there. You know, back many years ago. But you know, the, the thing about Leichhardt, if if you saw the West Tigers on 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 Saturday, thirty two six against Cronulla, fifteen thousand nine hundred ninety people there. Oh, when cheering, Hill, it's when cheering Hill, themselves, yeah, cheering yeah, themselves yeah. horse. Yeah. It's a fantastic venue. Um, You've got Shane Richardson now, the West Tigers chief executive, saying that unless improvements are made to the stadium, they won't play there again next year and in future years. And he's talking about them moving to the Olympic Stadium, Accor Stadium, which which would be a disaster, I think. Yeah, too big. Too, too big. Too, yeah. too big. Too big. I, I hate watching games yeah. from that venue. But the thing is, you know, they've said, you know, the, the stadium urgently needs refurbishment. Uh, for a whole variety of reasons. But Chris Minns, who is the Premier of New South Wales, has put his foot down and said, no, we're not going to do that. Now, the thing is, this like our stadium, like a lot of other stadiums in Australia, is owned by government. Mm. It's owned by the, the, the New South Wales government. So, quite frankly, that government is, a, is, is like a, a, a slum landlord who allows a house to deteriorate further and further uh, and expects the tenants to put up with it that's what he's doing and it's an absolute disgrace in my view mm. you know if 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 the government can't improve that stadium and the other stadiums that need improvement as well then hand them over to the clubs and let the clubs sort out the finance and the you know and 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 I notice in today's in the Australian newspaper today um Paul Kent has written a piece saying that they ought to give Leichhardt Oval to the NRL and the NRL could then take control of it and develop it to to become the boutique stadium that it could be. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I mean, the, the, the initial um, reaction from um, Peter Vlandis, the chairman of the NRL, seemed to be quite positive to that idea. I mean, it's, it's only an idea that's been floated mm-hmm. so far, but I thought it was a very good one. Um, because, you know, the idea that Wests could move away from Leichhardt would be appalling. So where are they going to play that out? Campbelltown? Well, they, they also play at Campbelltown, yeah, but that's Campbelltown. also not a great stadium. No, it's not. I know. I played you know, for Western and, um, no, it's yeah, not, no. yeah, yeah. And uh, or, or they might play at um, Combank, which is Par- Parramatta's home ground, mm. or they might play at um, at the Olympic Stadium, right, which would right. be you know a complete disaster. Yeah, it will. I mean, I know you know the finan- the the finances add up, and, and Shane Richardson, when he was the chief executive of South Sydney, he took them to the Olympic Stadium. Mm. But the trouble is. You play all your games in front of a sparse crowd. You know, yeah. it it needs at least thirty thousand people to make it. You know, even look as though it's got some people in it. Mm. That place, and I'd I'd hate to see West Tigers going there. Yeah. So you know, it's about time that either the New South Wales Premier books his ideas up, or they give the ground to the NRL and 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 let the NRL, you know, restore the ground to its you know. True status. Mm. Another great memory as well. And I underscored my first ever try in the Winfield Cup. I took it to intercept of, of Sterlow, you know, uh, that season. He, he was at Hull and I knew he was, he was coming down the blind side. He created a three on two. And uh, there, there was me and my winger, uh, uh, Russ Gartner, and he uh, created a three on two on Sterlow. And I knew exactly what he, what he was doing, Sterlow. Mm. And uh, uh, I was around about 30, 30 yards, 35. And I thought, well, you're not, you, you're not kept co- uh, copy for me here. And mm. just literally, as he let the ball go, it was straight into my bed basket and he just shouted out. I knew I should not have passed that ball. I've been playing with him all season. He's, do, he's been doing it in touch and passing, what have you? Yeah. And as I go into the 80s, I'm just looking around and smiling and stirlows like that. 
<laughs> so that's another did, great memory the first ever try did you have a drink with him after that oh, game absolutely absolutely yeah yeah but I had to pay as well he didn't yeah, pay don't worry yeah. about that uh, but, but that's another great bugger. memory <laughs> taking an intercept off one of the greatest players ever yeah. in Peter Sterling to like out over my first try ever in the Winfield Cup yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Peter Sterling at Toowoomba Queensland great yes absolutely went, went on to play for New South Wales though so that's yeah. one of the when they always uh, give us Queenslanders crap about uh, the amount of New South Wales born players that play for us we always pull up Peter Sterling because he was born in Toowoomba which is in yeah. Queensland so, yeah. Um, yeah, so well, that's really interesting, mate. Um, I'm sure he, he didn't like you stealing that from him. So, yeah. Um, but Every yeah. time I see him, I remind him, and he still yeah. just shakes his head. He still <laughs> yeah. shakes his head, which is great to see. Yeah. Uh, it was awesome. a bad weekend for you in the NRL, wasn't it, Jake, this week? Broncos. With, um, yeah, I'm mm. afraid, you know. Reese Walsh injured. Reese Walsh being injured, and it was. Has he done his cheekbone? Bad, bad yeah, looking yeah, injury. Oh, yeah. It looked terrible. It looked terrible. that way. It looked, yeah. that way straight it looked away. terrible. Yeah, He's was, out for at least five weeks now. A lot of the. Uh, it seemed like the Penrith fans were booing him. I think they thought that he was down milking a penalty, and then when he looked up, his eye was like completely shut up. And um, yeah. yeah, so the Broncos are going to be without Payne Haas and Reese Walsh for probably the next four to six well, weeks. When, when I saw Walsh, he stood on the sideline there, and I thought, he's, he's depressed because I've depressed my cheekbone twice myself. Yeah. And as soon as I looked at him, I said, his, his, his cheekbone's depressed there. Mm. You know, and they said, oh, well, he may not be able to see properly out of his eye yet, they'll give him a bit more time. But as yeah. soon as I saw him, well, his, his cheekbone's gone. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. yeah, I know you myself. Cause I, yeah, I've done it. I've done it twice. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so you know, they'll have to make do with that. I think Adam is Adam Rounds back soon. Uh, I believe he's been named uh, mm. from What's memory. Why didn't he play the weekend? Ah, uh, just getting old. I think it might, might have been like a, a groin or oh, hamstring sort of. I tell you what, though, how good was Nathan Cleary that for staff? Yeah. Well, he's, he's out though, isn't he now? Nathan Cleary for a while. Yeah, yeah he's done his hamstring. hamstring. Mm. He's, he's going to be out for about six weeks, and uh, Brad Schneider, Schneider, the ex-Hull KR player, oh, is going right. to be taking his place, taking his place. This, mm. this 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 Thursday. So did he do in that game then? Yes, yeah, he, he did. Got yeah, off, he, he got brought off. Quite, yeah, they yeah. Gave, oh, but they kept it quiet then, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. they did. They they just thought they were resting him, but actually, yeah. uh, you know, his father had noticed that his right, hamstring had right, gone. Okay. So, so, is he out for the first origin? Is he? Uh, I don't, don't know. I think he'll be back in time for the Probably first origin back. at this yeah. stage. Probably back. But they play the the Roosters on Thursday, don't they? Which will be a hell of a game, actually. Oh, they have, yeah, yeah. They hammered South Sydney. At the how weekend. are they doing? As well? I've not uh, seen uh, Kai Pierce, Paul at Newcastle, and um, Morgan Smith is at Canberra. How are they doing? Yeah. Like very, that? very, very well. Um, Newcastle beat Melbourne at the yeah, weekend, yeah. didn't they? And yeah, I think yeah. Kai Pierce, Paul had a good game for them. And, right. And Smithers has been topping the cat tackle count at, well, you uh, that anyway, don't you? At, yeah. at, at Canberra. What about um, Price at Newcastle? I don't think he's got in yet. No, but, yeah, you no, know, he's just right. been. I think right. he's near to getting in, but not, mm. not quite okay. yet. They've um, done a reshuffle for this week. Was it? Was it last weekend? When Jackson Hastings was dropped, Jack Cogger came in. Yeah. Um, so if they're reshuffling things this early, maybe mm. Price will Price get, a, get a an opportunity. What's he been dropped for Hastings? Oh, well. No, I don't know. I think it was. Uh, I think some of the reasoning was they needed more of a, a dual threat half, whereas Hastings just is very much passable, passable. Mm. I think they wanted to have, um, you know, mm. the defence questioning. There's too, there's too many of them about. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. We, we've got yeah. one of the leads in Matt Frawley. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, obviously it must have, uh, must have worked over the weekend, so we'll see what happens yeah. uh, this weekend. By um, the way, did you ever play with Mark Geyer? No. Uh, no, no, because no. his his son's making his debut for Penrith this week. Oh, is he? Mm. Yeah, a young man called Maverick Guy. No, he's one to really watch for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. Up against him. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to uh, Tristan Saylor coming in for the Broncos, uh, the yeah. son of Wendell Saylor, right. uh, yeah. filling it fullback. He did a great job for us through the Origin period last year. We had some of our players. A lot of sons out. playing in the yeah. competition oh, at the right. moment. I tell you what, as well, because we're talking about coaches who are under a bit of pressure. Certainly, telling us before over here. What about him, Jason Dimitri at South? Will he be under oh, pressure? Do you think? Gosh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Three pressure. losses. Yeah. Bot- bottom of the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. You know. It's it's just so hard because um, you but can it, see. But everybody, but anybody in, in in that competition, they can beat anybody, can't they? Of course you know, they the can. Bottom, bottom can beat top, but you, you won't get you won't get London beating Wigan, will you? And all this sort of thing. But mm. yeah, well, you, can, you can get South turning. I know they got beat by the Roosters this week, but four or five weeks down the line, they could turn them over. But that's well, that's the nature of the competition, isn't it? Down. But, but, but put it put it this way: it was the third third round yeah. at the weekend. Cronulla were undefeated. West Tigers hadn't won a game, and West Tigers beat them thirty-two-six. Mm. So that that, that shows just tells you, doesn't it, the that, quality that, of the competition. Of course, it does. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. No, it's um, it's a very tight competition, uh, and I'm hoping my Broncos can 
Get you a, a Broncos fan, eh? Yeah, Broncos fan. Yeah, Wally, uh, Lewis, Wally Lewis and Big Gino. Yeah, yeah. I was sort of <laughs> born into it. So I was, I was born in Toowoomba as well, so that's probably right, my closest okay. team. Uh, Who's your favourite ever player then? Who's your best player? Darren Lockyer. Yeah, Darren Lockyer. Lockyer? Yeah. I think, uh, Do you not he... see Wally? Do you not see Wally much? No, he's sort of a little bit before my time. Like, I was right. born in 98. So, oh, right, okay. Um, Alfie, yeah. what about Alfie then? Yeah. yeah, sort of the back end of Alfie. Okay. Um, who else do I love? Oh, there's so many to pick from. Like, I grew up supporting the greatest ever Queensland team, uh, in my uh, opinion, with Thurston, Lockyer, Inglis, Cameron Smith, Smith yeah, yeah. Slater. Yeah. Um, you, know, you can't really All right, top enough, that, enough, 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 enough. All right. <laughs> yeah. You're talking about Super League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're talking right. about too much quality. All no, right, no, that's no, enough. No, no. That's enough. Let's get talking so, about Super League. <laughs> but I will say bef- before Let's we talk about quality of... in Super League. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. No, I will say this, though. If Darren Lockyer isn't made an immortal, uh, oh, I'll be yeah, yeah. bitterly disappointed. Well, it's yeah. him, him and Cameron Smith, surely, aren't they? They've mm. got to be. You would imagine so. We've had that, because Cameron Smith, <clears throat> I said he, he's the best hooker ever, but but the best hooker right, is, is Benny Elias, you know, mm. but the only thing with difference between Cameron and Benny, Cameron could kick goals and, you know, uh, do the touch fighting as well, but as far as the best ever hookers there, Benny Elias and Cameron Smith, they brought the hooking role to an absolute new dimension. Mm. They always say Cameron was a pretty good referee as well. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I did my referee myself when I was yeah. a captain, Martin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A, the on field lawyer, Cam Smith. Yeah. The on field uh, lawyer. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. Right. I did my name with a few words with the referee when I was, no. when I was a captain myself. Yeah. 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 <laughs> didn't, didn't get marched for too much back chat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what? I, I, I could not believe this. I, I only ever got sent off once in my career. Stuart Cummins sent me off in the semi final premiership at Leeds. Yeah. And uh, because <clears throat> we was getting hammered, you know, we was getting hammered, uh, I think it's about. Thirty-two-four, and just before half time, were you playing? St. Talents, yeah. St. Talents, and uh, anyway, I think it was what ninety-four and ninety-five. Anyway, so I put Kevin Iroh uh, through from the scrum, and he uh, under post. Anyway, he, he pulled it back for a forward pass, and I was just frustrated because we were getting hammered, and it wasn't going well. Anyway, so I give him a bit of serve, Stuart Cummings. Yeah. Anyway, so he, he puts me in the sim bin. Yeah. Anyway, so as I'm going, just literally to the side man, and I, I just literally. Give a bit of a serve again to to the touch judge. So the touch judge comes on. I thought, well, I, I know whoever is many facts. I thought I know what's happening here. So I just turned back and just literally pointed at Stuart Cummings, and I can't repeat the yeah, words yeah. what I said. <laughs> no way, mate. Anyway, yeah. so, so he sent me off. But believe it or not, fellas, right? Yeah. The second half, we were only at twelve men because I was off. Wind up beating St. Ellen's by six points. Really? <laughs> Wind up wow. beating St. Ellen's by six points. Right, but then it was a week, two weeks later, we went to Old Trafford and uh, Wigan Amateurs, Chris Lodden scored for each side, 70 odd points to 10 anyway. But yeah, we, uh, mm. I got sent off and we ended up winning the game. So when I've gone to the uh, the disciplinary and uh, they're giving my uh, disciplinary record, and, and Jeff Keith said, hey, listen, you've got a, a, a dis- disciplinary record. What you've said here, normally you'll get six matches, you'll be getting two. So anyway, but this is your disciplinary record. And what yeah. I didn't really, what I didn't know, and I, I'm not really proud of this because realistically, you know, you shouldn't really abuse the officials or whatever. But I've been sin bin 19 times. Wow. Mm. For saying wrong words to a thing. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, I'm not no. proud of that. And I'm not proud of it. So I've been sent off once yeah. for abusing uh, a referee, yeah. and I was sin bin 19, t- 19 <laughs> times <laughs> for just having some quiet words with the officials, which oh, I'm yeah. not proud of. Yeah. Oh, well, oh, the rest is history, mate. Uh, I'm sure you've joined a, a long list of I'll players. Tell you what, it's, a been... it's a good job I wasn't playing today, the way referees are today. <laughs> yeah. I've been sent off every game, I'll tell yeah, you. Yeah. 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 Jesus. You'd I have a, a very long rap sheet, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, I'm not proud of it, obviously. Yeah. That's should be right. proud of that, should you? Been yeah. sitting midnight in time for having having words. And by the way, I was a captain as well. Yeah. You, were supposed to, you were supposed to, you know, uh, be allowed to speak to referees. Yeah. Weren't you? Depends oh, what you uh, said to him. Yeah. Well, that's another point, yeah. Martin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, well, sometimes emotions <laughs> boil over. Um, just quickly, fellas, we'll look at the, the the matches this weekend to get your quick picks. Uh, Thursday night. Good to see football back on Thursday night. We always love our Thursday night yeah, games yeah, here. Yeah. Uh, Castleford uh, taking on Leeds. Big, well, supposed to be a big Yorkshire derby, but the way Castleford are going, I can only see one result, and I'm going to go the Rhinos to do a good job, hopefully bounce back from massive disappointment going out the Challenge Cup. I'm going the Rhinos to beat Cast quite easy. Mm. They run about 28 points. Mm. I'll I'll say they'll beat them, but, but only by 10. Okay, cool. Uh, Hull KR taking on Hull FC in the in the derby. <coughs> Come on, you Hull players. Come on, it's all about bragging rights. You need to, you need to put in the performance whether you don't want to play for Tony Smith you don't play for Adam Pearson put a performance in for the supporters don't let them down but I'm afraid it's looking to Rovers quite easily mm-hmm. I'm going for Lucas to Rovers to win by 28 yeah. I'm going for them by 20 yep 
Uh, then we have Saints taking on Wigan. Ooh, Top of the table, big clash. Tough. Tough. Yeah. Well, if Wigan are going to lose a game all season, this will be it, won't it? Yeah. So I'll go for Saints by four points. Mm-hmm. I just, I just uh, think Wigan at this moment in time are uh, just above... Uh, uh, above Saints, everybody, uh, mm-hmm. well, quite easy above everybody else, but just above uh, St. Helens. I don't think Wellens is too happy. It's comfortable with performances, but not over happy. But I think the quality of Wigan, not too far, but but I'm going to go Wigan by seven. Mm. Can we see this game going extra time? Do you think? Could do. Mm. Yeah, could, could do. do. Yeah. Will he be playing? Is Dodds? Is Dodds? Will Dodds be back? I don't know. Right, I've not. Yeah. I've not. I've right. not seen. I don't think they've named the squad yet. Mm. Interesting to see if Jay Field's yeah. back as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going Wigan by seven. Okay, cool. Uh, then we got uh, Warrington taking on uh, Catalans. Uh, again, massive statement game for Warrington, isn't mm. it, this? And uh, I think they might just sneak it, actually. I think I'll just go with them for six. Six points win. Well, Catalans uh, just did him over in one. So Warrington, again, that word revenge will be, uh, he'll be in for that first uh, first game of the season. But uh, I just think the, uh, the Catalans forwards will have too much for Warrington. I do, and... Uh, I think the Catalans forward to love them, and uh, I think it's going to be Catalans by ten. Yeah, we have uh, Salford taking on Lee. A- That's a tough one, isn't it? After Salford's poor performance in the cup, um, you'd think that Lee might be in with a real strong chance of winning that game. I think I'd just go with Lee by six. Yeah. I think Paul Rowley want a massive reaction after that performance against Salford yeah. and Rovers. Massive disappointment, uh, not just going out of the Challenge Cup, but the performance itself. He'll want a reaction. I'm going Salford by ten. And in the uh, final matchup, London taking on Huddersfield. Well, you could only go with Huddersfield, really, can't you? Mm. And um, although London presumably will have some lone players back again, um, I mean, are London improving? I'm not quite so sure, but and they've got a lot of injuries, haven't they? So they're doing it tough. I would think Huddersfield probably by 20 points. Yeah, yeah London. <coughs> well, they're enjoying themselves back in Super League, but unfortunately, they just haven't got the quality. He'll, he'll, he'll want to make sure there's plenty of points on the board here in Watson for the four and the gains. I'm going to Huddersfield to beat him by 32. Mm, yeah, perfect. All right, well, that wraps up uh, this weekend's matchup. So I just wanted to um, quickly remind our viewers and listeners that if you are listening or watching us here today, don't forget to hit subscri- uh, subscribe on our uh, Total Rugby League YouTube channel uh, to be notified every time we upload our videos. And um, we did have an interesting comment in uh, last week's episode, Martin, one of the suggestions from uh, listeners, Billy Tetlow, he has suggested that perhaps um, Catalans could look at playing all of their away games in London due to the uh, French base and, and the number of uh, French people living in London right. to not only grow the game uh, in London, but also attract you know as many French fans as we can to uh, their fixtures in London I don't think well. most English clubs would agree to that, though, do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Interesting idea, but gosh. No, no, no. Just something, uh, an out-of-the-box thought I saw pop up in the comments. So I thought I'd mention it. Yeah, uh, yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I don't yeah. know what your thoughts are. Yeah, we're getting quite a few comments on the... Uh, you know, in response to the podcast now, aren't we? Mm. Someone else mentioned that Hull FC will likely be saved by IMG. In other years, they could be facing our relegation. They could be. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, you never know, though. I mean, will they retain 15 points in the gradings? I'm not so sure. I would imagine if they all see fancy this, they'll be saying, Mr. Sadler, don't get that score for your back on again. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't know. I think <laughs> I'm from the Hull fans. I, no, I think agree they will with agree. With you. Uh, to be honest, Gary, I think they'll agree with every word you've said. Mm. To be to be blunt, and we'll throw that out to our listeners. Uh, yeah, let us know let in us the know. comments uh, if let you agree with everything Gary being too harsh on Hull. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, anything else you fellas want to touch on before we wrap up here today? Have we missed anything? No, I don't think so. I think we've uh, covered a lot of ground and we've um, spent quite a bit of time doing it. Mm. So uh, great to you know thanks to Gary for being here with us again, and uh, as always, Gary, you've expressed some very forthright views in a very entertaining way. Yeah, so it's a real pleasure to have you with us and uh, obviously I hope we'll see you again I hope so and I'm looking forward to the invite again but but but, uh, but I just want to say just on behalf of everybody who's involved in Rugby League for the Challenge Cup come on supporters come on the mm. RFL let's get the greatest Rugby League Cup competition sorted out and let's bring back the glory of the Challenge Cup happy to end it there perfect alright fellas uh, yeah, we'll do it all again next week Martin thank I look you. forward to having you back on Gary really appreciate it mate pleasure thank Great you stuff. thank you